If you're trying to become a songwriter, you got to know in your heart that God gave you the gift. You know, I don't know why I write songs. I just I always tell people, I guess because I can. Rudy, if there's ever an American dream that is that is put into a package that is so clear of the hardships, of the challenges, of the real energy of, of pure passion motivating someone. You are that great example of this. It really <laughs> thank is. You, thank you, Dan. Thank you for having me. Thank you for it's joining my, us, Rudy. My thank great so pleasure, much. man. Everything has been hard. You know, everything has been hard in my life. No, yeah. Nothing has been easy. Yeah. But like Benini said, you know, the great actor, and, yeah. and when he won his Oscar, uh, he said, you know, I, I thank my parents for the poverty. <laughs> I'm kind of the same way. <laughs> well, that, th there are lessons from that kind of a beginning mm -hmm. that you humbly have maintained those lessons. I think that's really a part of the success that has given you the, 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 the opportunities that you have now. Of course. I mean, growing up in the hood, you know, coming as a, as a kid from Cuba with yeah. nothing but your clothes on. Yeah. Your father was in prison, uh, Fidel Castro, you know, just because he was an anti-revolutionary. Yeah. And the first five years of my life, I didn't get to see my dad. He was, he was locked up. Okay. And finally, when we get to America, we, we're so poor, we have nothing. We, we grew, I grew up in the hood, yeah. you know, and, and probably the, the, most, the most dangerous neighborhoods in, in the city of Miami. Yeah, yeah. It all started with my mom giving me that longing for wanting to get somewhere, but doing it on my hard work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which uh, today I think a lot of kids have so much accessible to them that they don't have the energy or the drive to go get things. But it's a good, good point. You know, it's also a matter of, of the fight. Mm -hmm. You know, you had to fight for what you had. Absolutely. And I think what I see in a lot of younger generation is that they, they don't have the fight. They don't have the fight. And the fight really was, was I, I really believe when I, and, and your book is fantastic. And I, as I listen to it on, on the audio file, it, it really kind of, you know, hearing you speak about it and you can hear the passion, you can hear the challenges. What was it like with music? What music was around you at a young age? Well, when I was a little kid, the biggest influence of my life, and it's in the book too, it's my uncle uh, Enrique. Yeah, yeah. We, they used to call him Tarzan because he was such a, a, a you know, a strong uh, bodybuilder. And he was a soldier, and he unfortunately died when he was 18, 19 years old. It was just turning 19, and Enrique was the, the, the guy that influenced me. I was a little kid, two, three years old, and he would come from the military from his, you know, his, uh, his trips, and he would just play Elvis and the Beatles and, and, and carry us and dance around. So that was my first influence. The second was my mom. My mom was a seamstress, and she used to play a lot of classical music, so I had an early you know, just love for classical music. She, she used to hear anybody from Puccini to Chopin to oh, Debussy. Yeah. And then my dad, on the other hand, loved the standards and loved Sinatra and <laughs> loved uh, Celia Cruz. <laughs> you know, so he was an eclectic uh, mix of great music. And so I, I was in this household full of, you know, all this great music. Well, that, that has to have been the foundation because when you write and, 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 and your music, you can really kind of hear yeah. A little bit of, of how you pull from everything, exactly, which is so beautiful. Yeah, me, uh, classical music. Uh, today, like uh, recently, a friend of mine asked me, said, said "Hey, yeah, well, Rudy, what do you hear? What's on your playlist?" And I go, "You know, it's the classics, classical music, yeah. and jazz. That, that's, <laughs> is there anything else?" <laughs> well, that's a great message for younger generation to understand that there is still tons of information you can pull from that. Oh my God, I wish they were more curious yeah, yeah. about the greats of the past, about the, 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 the ones that, the teachers, you know, because yeah, I, yeah. I consider a lot of the heroes that I have, my teachers, I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for these people. Yeah, yeah, but that's what's powerful about, about even this message, that as I listen to you speaking and the, and the fans that you have worldwide, mm -hmm. to hear how you pulled this off and how you pulled, you know, out of yourself this great music that you're still, you're still at the, at, the, at the cutting edge of what's happening. I notice in a lot of your interviews, a lot of my colleagues, these great giants that you've interviewed, yeah. they all agree with us, with you and me, about the hard work. Right. You know, right. you have right. to put a lot of effort into yeah, it. Yeah. It just doesn't happen that you're sitting at home watching TV eating a bowl of cereal and all of a sudden, you know, Sony calls you and says, hey, I want to sign you. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah. happen that way. You just got to go get it. It's also not, not a, 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 a TV show. 
that allows you to come up and sing a few songs, exactly. and then you win a contract. That's yeah. also a little bit of the, exactly. of the of the falsity of what how the music industry is. It's really a farce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's interesting because with this hard work now, so now you start playing with some musicians, you're starting to play piano, you're learning, you're experiencing meeting some musicians. Well, what happened at that point? My, my dad, when I was seven or eight years old, I said, Dad, could you buy me a piano? <laughs> and he said, you know, we don't have the money to buy you a piano, but I got a better idea. And he drew a piano, all 88 keys <laughs> and a cardboard oh my gosh. and gave it to me and said, this is your first piano. Oh my God! Can you believe this? I oh mean, and, and so that, and then uh, he had a friend uh, by the name of R uh, Rolando Yuiz, who was a great trombone player and a music teacher. And I started le learning, you know, um, theory with him. And yeah. and when I got into it, I really wanted to sight read better than anybody that's ever lived. Yeah. And he saw my passion. He saw that I that I was committed into wanting to be the greatest musician sight reader. And he came to me one day and he sat down because he discovered that I could write melody and that I had melody in me. And he sat down with me and he said, hey, listen to me, kid. I've backed up a lot of giants from Sinatra. Let me tell you, the future of a backing musician is from the music stand to the instrument. Mm. Interesting. Okay? Yeah. So you have the gift of melody, become a songwriter, become an artist, go out there. I know you want to sight read and you want to do all this, and sort of it was a bummer because, you know, he kind of like threw a, <laughs> threw a, <laughs> a wrench, wrench in the game, in the game and, and, and all of a sudden I went, oh, you know, because I was really looking forward to being an incredible studio musician, you know, backup guy in a band, you know, with somebody. But he said, look, go, go write songs. What a bit of advice when you think about it. This, listen, mentorship happens in very unusual ways. That's right. Sometimes it guides you along the way where it's not exactly what we wanted to hear, mm -hmm. but it still is mentorship. So these are... Great mentors. What do you think? I mean, how many mentors do you think you had oh that saw God. something in you? How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have so many heroes, so many people that, that have inspired me. I started the Latin Songwriters Hall of Fame just because two of my greatest heroes of all time. One has a 62-year career, yeah. and the other one has a 65-year career <laughs> as songwriter, successful. Yeah. These guys dominated the charts for four or five decades yeah. when I started, and, and I remember one of them, I had a big hit. My first big hit was with Jose Feliciano, Beautiful. And, and Beautiful. it was number one in Spain, and this guy is from Spain, Manuel Alejandro, that's his name, and he calls me up and he says, hey kid, it's Manuel Alejandro, and I'm like, Maestro, wow, it's incredible. I can't believe I'm talking to you. And he goes, uh, yeah, I just wanted to tell you something. You know, when I heard your song, three things happened to me. And I said, what, what was that? And he goes, well, the first thing I said to myself, what a great song. Mm. And the second thing I said, why didn't I write it? <laughs> and the third thing, thing I said was, how could you write it? <laughs> and that was it, man. I learned so much from all these, these amazing people from the past that, that have formed who I am today. What do you think they saw in you? You know, a mentor, a mentor looks at someone and, and sees something which sometimes the individual cannot see. What do you think they saw in you? I think they saw in me, first of all, that I had talent, because a lot of people today, you know, they think they have talent, yeah, yeah, but they don't. Yeah, yeah. They just have technology, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and you have to know, and you can't lie to yourself. When you're standing brushing your teeth in the morning, you gotta look at yourself and say, do I really have talent? Yeah. And if you don't, become a manager or become, you know, right. some, something else. But, it, right. but if you're trying to become a songwriter, you got to know in your heart that God gave you the gift. Mm. You know, I don't know why I write songs. I just, I always tell people, I guess because I can, you know, yeah. I, I, I have no idea what happens. I just, yeah. I just feel like I'm, I'm being used by some force. I call it God yeah. that, you know, funnels all this stuff through me yeah. and sometimes I got to just like pinch myself and go I didn't live that story I don't, I don't remember ever how can I write something like this and that's I think most songwriters will agree that they don't really know how it comes you can search for it yeah. because skill when, when skill jumps in you could actually you know you have you have a big hit today and a week later you get another big star saying I want a hit like that yeah, yeah. so that's when the skill comes in that you got to go and say okay how do I do another <laughs> masterpiece, you know, and it's and it's it's the commerciality of the business that I don't like particularly. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it seems like you found and understood your gift. Absolutely. And then with that, you started to kind of 
fuel it a little. You kind of let it happen because your gift is still as active now. Absolutely. Which is amazing. Absolutely. Right now I'm doing a, a project that's a huge project that I can't really talk about yeah. too much, but I, I can tell you it's 79 hours of original music that I got to write, arrange, and produce. Interesting. 79 hours. That's a lot. That's a lot of yeah, music yeah, yeah. that I have to do. And so I've been getting a lot more into scoring and to doing a lot of uh, my passion, which is Christian music. Yeah. So all these people that, uh, that I was mentored by, they really saw that I also had an incredible work ethic. And that started with my mom when I approached her when I was a little kid, you know, t 11 years old, 12 years old. And I said, Mom, I want a guitar and an amplifier. I'm in love with this guitar. <laughs> it was like that Jimi Hendrix White Strat. Yes. You know, and a Fender <laughs> Twin Reverb. And, and I said, Mom, I really want this. She goes, how much is that? And I said, it's, you know, $300 for the amp and $400 for the guitar. And she goes, okay, you know what you're going to do? You're going to get a job. You're going to save $700. And then you're going to go and buy it. And it's going to make you feel so good that you bought it with your own effort. And that was it. Yeah. That was, and I think she did it because we were in the hood. Yeah. She, she knew maybe she could have you know, loaned me the money. Yeah. But she knew that if she did that, she would make me weak in this neighborhood. Mm. She had to make me strong to go figure it out on my own. Well, that's so deep, Rudy. You know, that, that, that's the message that, that I keep on hearing from the several days I've been here in Miami. The musicians that have all come in here, Absolutely. all of them which have worked with you yes. at many, many levels. And the re amount of respect when your name comes up. Likewise to them. You, but you are revered at a point, well, Rudy, that, that he really, <laughs> he's, he's really the guy. So they, they, they have funneled this respect to you at that level. And those lessons that your mom taught you, that respect that you have earned has funneled down to all of these musicians because they use you as an example and use you as a mentor. This is the cycle <laughs> at its best and I got continuing. A, and I owe that, I got to tell you to Jose Feliciano because Jose allowed me on the first project we did to work with some of the greatest musicians in LA. Yeah. All of them, James yeah. Gatson, David Foster, Michael Landau, you know, Nathan Neese, uh, Abe Laborio, all those guys, Vinny, I mean, the, the list is amazing. Yeah. And so after having that level, I couldn't go back. So when I got back to Miami from that, this, I mean, this is like late 70s. Yeah, yeah. Miami didn't have very good musicians. It was like these That's guys, they were like, kind of like, okay, you know, questionable. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, I, I'm coming from working with the greatest in the world. And I said to myself, I live here. I got to figure this out. Mm. So I started reaching out to young kids that were coming out of, uh, of the uh, UM and some of the schools yeah. and saying, hey, you know, Come here, and I would play them and give them the charts and see. Look, look, this is Robbie Buchanan. Yeah. This is what he does, yeah, yeah. and this is this guy. And look, listen to that. Yeah, yeah. And so I started morphing some of these local guys into sounding like those guys. Yeah, absolutely. And creating my own Jerry Hayes style, like <laughs> brass section down here. And you know, and I and I owe that to Jose because he gave me a standard that that it was impossible for me to you know to go anywhere else. A absolutely. You know, we got to talk about Jose Feliciano because many of the names who may not know who he is from the, the newer generations. This, this is a, a, another gifted, talented, Giant. blind, and, and, and how he hears music, how he plays music. Just talk a little bit about Jose. Well, Jose is my hero. When I was growing up in the hood, I used to see Jose on Don Kirshner's rock concerts, rock concert, yeah. and I used to see him on the Midnight Special. Yeah. And which, I used were, which were evening shows yes. that showcase bands and music. Yeah, and this is a Latino, blind musician. Yeah. And to me, it was like, God, thank you, because yeah. he made it. I have a chance. You yeah, know, he's, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's incredible. And then he lands Chico and the Man, the top series in the, in the United States. And yeah. then, you know, he's like, he's everywhere and, and mainstream. And I said, you know, then he changes the, the American uh, anthem forever. Yeah, yeah. When he came out in the World Series and, 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 and played it like nobody had I ever done it. I remember that. It was beautiful. And half of the stadium was throwing cans at him, uh, you know, really yeah, upset. Yeah, yeah. And the other half was giving him a standing ovation. Yeah. Then after that, you know, obviously Hendrix did it in yeah. Woodstock. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. So now everybody does it yeah, that yeah, way. But, yeah. but Jose is just um, a, a great influence in my life. He's the guy that uh, when I met him, he said to his manager, this is the guy that I've been waiting for. And his manager goes, but Jose, wait a minute. You just met him. <laughs> and you have the best producer in the world, the best songwriter. 
I don't care, Rudy's gonna work with me as a producer and a songwriter, because as I was playing him the songs on piano and guitar, I would be humming the string parts and telling him what the background vocals were gonna yeah, do yeah, and yeah, yeah. how everything was gonna work as far as the arrangement. Yeah. And he got up you know, with that swing that he, yeah, that he yeah, says yeah, and he yeah. tells his manager, this guy is gonna work <laughs> with me. So they, the guy goes, but what am I gonna do with the label? And you tell the label that if they don't see this kid's talent, they are the only blind people here. Oh, oh my and God. that was it, he fought for me. Yeah. And so I owe him a lot, you know, I really do. But you bring that out in people. You, you, you have a, a magic really that, that brings this out in people, even with Julio Iglesias. I mean, how you met these people along the way. It's almost like you didn't meet them through opportunity. Your spirit pulled them right into you. You pulled them I've right I've always been into humble, you. you know. I've, Mr. Parencio, my, my, my ex-boss at Univision Music Group, when we started the company, he used to tell me, you know, the, the, the spotlight fades the suit. Hmm. If you're behind the artist, stay behind the artist. Yeah. So I, I was a recluse. I never went out and did interviews for years and years and years. Yeah. I had the top shows calling me and saying, you know, we'll do a special of one hour. And I would politely decline and say, no, thank you. I just felt it was their spotlight. Yeah. And somebody asked me recently, hey, what does a producer do? And what a, what's, what's your job? Tell me in one word. And I said, I'm a spotlight. Yeah. I'm a guy that gets taken out of a closet plugged in, <laughs> turned on to make somebody look great. And I, think, and I think most of us musicians, that's what we do. They kind of feel that way. That's been many of the, it's funny because that attitude I have heard and felt mostly here in the Miami area. Yeah. There's an incredible family and respect of sure. musicians that kind of get that. Everyone says, well, the guys that are working with Barry Gibb, they all, we, go, we gotta make him look good, it's all about him. That's right. It's brilliant to have that mentality. Well, you know, uh, I owe that to uh, my, my dear and, 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 and dearly miss, you know, uh, Phil Ramone. Yeah. Phil told me one time, you know, because I was, uh, I, I, I told him, hey, Phil, come and check this, this, uh, this thing out that I'm doing with this Mexican artist and don't listen to his voice and don't listen to, to you know, the songs, they're kind of crappy. <laughs> Listen to my arrangements and what I played and all this stuff. And he, and he takes the album and he goes, uh, so what does that say there? Uh, produced by Rudy Perez. I said, Listen, man, you know, worry about the guy on the cover, okay? And then somebody will take a look at you. And that completely changed my, my outlook, you know, uh, my approach to productions. At that time, I was eager just for people to listen to me. And because and, I, cause I, I, nobody cared about me. I, I, I would do a song and produce an album, and these guys would go and get all the glory, and nobody would call me for an interview or yeah, any kind of, yeah, yeah. you know, I was like an invisible man, even though I was selling millions of records. So he told me, look, worry about that guy on the cover and watch what happens. And sure enough, when, because it was like a, something just, you know, just uh, my shoulders just dropped. <laughs> oh, oh. Wow, that's all I got to do? <laughs> and from that moment on, my whole thing has been the artist has to get the best song. I don't care who writes it. Mm. If somebody comes along and has a better song than mine, I take that's mine out. Beautiful. Second of all, if they are uh, doing a, a, a crappy performance, yeah. you got to remind them that this is not a live performance. This is a forever performance that's yeah. going to remain and people are going to be able to re rewind and, and look at the, you yeah. know, the mistakes. So let's get it really, really great. So these are, these are the things that, uh, that I've always, uh, uh, how I approach. Well, you, you, you've maintained that because your music yeah. still, still is, is, is as alive and as rich and as powerful today Thank you. as it was years ago. Thank you so much. You mentioned in your book, you mentioned about that the music industry is like an octopus. Yes. <laughs> you gotta learn how to wrestle it. You have to learn how to wrestle Talk it. Talk about the industry itself. Uh, when you have success uh, as a songwriter, as a producer, whatever it is, you know, you're gonna have all these major labels and all these independent labels, and you gotta be Swiss. Yeah. You know, you, got, you, got, you <laughs> gotta be Switzerland there. You, got, you, have to, you, have to, you have to know, cause they all get jealous. Yeah. Cause if you give Universal a number one song this week, all the other ones are yeah. hating you. Yeah. So you gotta go back and do it for EMI and Sony. <laughs> And I, I've been doing that for 40 years, so that's not an easy task. That's juggling at its best. And never being exclusive to any one of them. Yeah. Which is another, I've been approached by all of them to sign exclusively to them. Yeah. And I always say, you know, how can I sign ex exclusive to, let's say, EMI, when Julio is at Sony yeah. and when Jose is in uh, RCA? Yeah. Yeah. These are my friends. Yeah. If they call me, I got to go and help yeah. them, you yeah. know? Yeah. But so. that's, that's that family 
that bond of family respect. Absolutely. That you guys have that is so great to see. And that, if that message can be translated to this next generation, to understand that there's power in respect that way. Another thing that I showed the musicians down here, especially the guys that I started working with early on, I showed them how to envision a song as they're playing a rhythm track, how it's gonna sound on the radio. Mm. See, I worked with a band called Pearly Queen back in the day in my, in my early, we did about 98 clubs with the Flanagan's lounges, yeah, Big Daddy's yeah. lounges. Yeah. We ended up at the Whiskey A Go Go. And, <laughs> and so we were doing a lot of top 40 music. And I think that was my real university because mm. we had to dissect all these songs. Right, right. And you know, everybody had to learn their part. If you're the drummer, hey, tomorrow, you know, you got to learn uh, your drum part for this. Yeah, and yeah, we'd yeah. show up at the rehearsal. Everybody would, you know, put the song together. But that opened up my curiosity for producing. And mm. so I, I immediately knew how a song must sound on the radio mm. before it was even a one, the first note was played. And so I kind of taught a lot of these young musicians, listen, when you're playing, like drummers, for example, yeah. drummers, uh, Richard Bravo, for example, who's, <laughs> we were recently playing, uh, we were doing a track for uh, this World Peace Organization that Klaus Nobel from the Nobel Peace Prize yes. uh, family was doing, and he hired me to do all these songs. So we were doing Imagine, right? And, 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 we're, and we're, you know, we're playing, and Richard's playing fantastic. But I go up to Richard and I say, hey, Richard, listen, do me a favor. Just one little favor. And you should have seen him when I, after, after, <laughs> after the take came out, incredible. Richard great, too. Richard <laughs> hugged me and he said, you know, Rudy, that's why you are who you are. Mm. I told him, Richard, go to the drums now in this take and play it in your mind singing the song. Okay? Imagine no, 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 no. Play it like that, my friend, okay? <laughs> you're singing the song. Now watch how you, different you're gonna play it. Because before it was like, nice pocket and everything, yeah, yeah. but it didn't have the feeling, the it emotion, is. and that's what it's all about. Every, every one of us have, have a different touch. Your touch is totally different from Vinny, yeah. and that's what makes you unique, yeah. and that's what makes Richard unique, because yeah. everybody's different. Even with the guitar, I think every instrument is a percussion instrument. Uh, Guitar, piano, beautiful. everything. Beautiful, beautiful. What do you think, there's a psychology that, that you have that, you know, from your childhood and all mm -hmm. these experiences that you have, that you know how to read people and you know how to read situations. Where do you think you got that from? How did that develop? I think from the eagles that I've worked with, you know, uh, I've worked with so many uh, eagles. Imagine my job. I'm the guy in the studio that, whoever it is, a big superstar comes in after being adored by millions of fans around the world. Yeah. Even if they did a terrible performance, they come into my studio and I'm the guy that has to say, hey, that was not that great. Let's do that again, okay? <laughs> try, th try this. Yeah. So my job has always been very difficult yeah. and I've always had to be able to make them feel comfortable and that I'm less talented than they are. Even though I know in my heart that I, that I, that I know more music than they do, yeah. I always make the artists feel like they're so much more talented than what I am. A beautiful, beautiful technique. But that's, yeah, it works yeah, for me because yeah, yeah. I, I get them comfortable. I'm not the kind of producer that tenses everybody in the studio. I hate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been with other producers yeah, that I've, yeah, I'm <laughs> sure you have. That, <laughs> that make you so yeah. tense because yeah. they want to break you into doing what they want. Right, right, right. And right. I, that's not my technique. But that, that, it almost like, like it goes back to your mom, you know, that, yes. that great family guidance Absolutely. that you had. You're bringing that right in the studio. You're making people feel so comfortable and you're able to pull the best out of them. Just ask any of the musicians that I've ever worked with, has Rudy ever produced you? And they'll yeah. tell you, I don't know how he does it. Yeah, yeah. He's never told me anything. Yeah, yeah. And you know why? Because cause if I hire you, it's because you're the best. Yeah. Because I always, all, everything that I do has to be excellent, excellence. And, you know, most producers, they get a $150,000 budget to do an album. Yeah. And they probably pocket 90000 into their pocket <laughs> and spend very little on the production. Oh, I'm yeah. the opposite. Yeah. I had the hits. I had the singles. I knew I was going to make my money in the back end. Beautiful. 
with the royalties from ASCAP and everything. Yeah. So I said, let's spend $151,000 <laughs> in the music and the engineers, the studio, the best musicianship that I could possibly find. And that's what makes a difference. Boy, Woody, this is what we're losing, we're losing in the industry right now. And it need, this message needs to be heard because that's this so is sad. what's going to lift the music industry. This is what's going to inspire musicians to want to play music so they can be involved and make a living in the music industry. It's so sad. You know, yeah. we, I just did a beautiful song called Live to See Another Day, which is a, it's, a, it's sort of like our prayer for gun violence in, in schools. You know, yeah. we, a lot of things happen, especially the, the one close to here, to Miami, yeah. the, you know. Yeah. That one, that one really touched us. I was riding with Bert Bacharach, and, and Bert and I were in, in, this, in his house in Pacific Palisades, and, uh, and I said, Bert, why don't we write something? And, and we wrote this beautiful piece. It's out on the internet. It's called Live to See Another Day. Beautiful. And, um, you know, that song, that song really changed, changed my, my, my outlook for things because I hadn't done a, a major recording session like this one. Yeah. You know, we were in Studio A in Capitol, Al Schmidt, at the board, Bird and I producing, George Calandrelli conducting the orchestra, <laughs> all the top players, JR, Dean Parks, yeah. Michael Thompson, yeah. uh, Neil Steubenhaus, Randy <laughs> Kerber. You know, we had all the, the best, the best yeah, guys yeah. in the room. And afterwards, I remember they all came up to me and they, and you know, they were like in, in tears, like e even, even Michael Thompson posted, you know, I wish there was more sessions like this. Oh. Because, you know, this, this is the way it used to be. Beautiful, yeah. You know? Yeah. You have this philosophy Thank of you. being able to really pull out the best of everybody. But how do you change, like when I, like when I look back at, at, even like mentioning Burt Bacharach. Burt Bacharach, if they don't know who Burt Bacharach is. <laughs> it's sad. It, that's sad, okay? So if you don't and you're listening, do the research, do the homework. Burt Bacharach has written some of the oh my great, God. <laughs> great songs, right? Emotionally loved songs. Beautiful the best. Songs. But you have gone from... Beyonce to Julio Iglesias to Christian Aguilera to Natalie Cole to Michael Bolton, Jose Feliciano, Mark Anthony, John Sakata, Roberto Carlos. You've got such a wide variety. How do you shift to, to associate with these people and write for them? Where does that come from? When a billboard uh, wrote that I was a chameleon yeah. because I, I, I was able to do uh, hip hop, R&B with Christina Aguilera and Beyonce and then do the most romantic music with Julio and Roberto Carlos and all these giants. and. I think it's the band, man. It's the Pearly Queen band. It's all that top 40 music yeah, that, I, that yeah. I did. And growing up in the States, you know, I, I, I'm a, a predominantly uh, an international Latin producer, yeah. but, but I got to tell you, I grew up with American music. Yeah. I, I grew up, you know, listening to, to all, everything from Grand Funk Railroad. So that makes me very unique and different from the rest of the Latin producers yeah. because they didn't grow up with that you know they didn't they don't have that foundation so i can dig into that because i think a lot of things have been overlooked from the past right 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 that i think the kids should go back and the one that's doing it very brilliantly is bruno mars yeah if you look absolutely. at bruno absolutely he's really tapping into the he's great. doing his homework that's right he's doing his homework so yeah. for yeah. those listening hey go yeah. listen to the guys in in the past because they're the ones absolutely what motivates you my love for artistry, my love for music, my true love for music, my family. You know, I get up every day and I tell God, you know, I'm open and receptive to all the wonderful things that are going to happen. I don't dwell in things, negative things, yeah. because I learned a long time ago that that's poison. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just look forward. I live the now. I live only the now. To me, the best moment in my life is this one that I'm having with you. Beautiful. And, and I just get up every day with an energy to go and create something. Because if you look at the Bible, the sure thing, the first thing we know about God is that He created. Yeah, yeah. In the first chapter of the Bible. Right. So mm -hmm. I just want to continue creating, and that's my passion. Well, you for sure have started a genesis here because you have opened up the careers of many different great, great artists and many great musicians. And you have this way of, like we say, you know, bringing the family together. You keep bringing the family together to produce great love, which is what the music is. And when I hear a story about an artist, you know, a front, front man artist, yeah. or, you know, somebody, a big star that treats their musicians like crap, yeah. it really boils my blood yeah. because, you know, those guys are your essence, you know? Yeah. So I treat them like my family. When they come to me, if we're having an all day session, they're eating breakfast on me, they're eating lunch on me, they're eating dinner on me, 
the best wines that I could possibly pull out yeah. and share with them. And I want them always to be, and that's been going on for 40 years. It's Beautiful. never going to change. Beautiful. And, my, and I don't care how many uh, managers I have or, or, or business managers that come to me and go, hey, you just spend $900,000 <laughs> feeding musicians a year. Are you crazy? And I'm going, well, you know, it's my great privilege, and I wish I could do more yeah. for them because they are everything. What a beautiful, beautiful attitude. How do you maintain, two things I want to ask, how do you maintain your playing and your musical energy, and how do you maintain your positive attitude? I do it because I have a wonderful wife by the name of Betsy, beautiful. who is like an angel. She, uh, you, know, you know, in this business, you know, you have a lot of betrayals and you have a lot of envy, yeah. especially when you become successful. I remember in the early days, I, uh, and this is an analogy, guys, uh, all of a sudden, you know, I would come in my, into my house with 25 knives stuck in my back, you know, <laughs> telling my wife, Betsy, hey, honey, look at this. Can you believe what they've done to me? And she would say, hey, stop it. Yeah. You should look at these people like little babies. Yeah. And if you look at them as little babies, you will never hurt. It's, it, won't, it won't bother you. Yeah. So I started just like completely, you know, Beautiful. just taking the knives out. It's a little baby, you know, and, <laughs> and all of a sudden I was, I was, I was like, you know, uh, loving everybody and, and, and realizing that a lot of people that may, you know, put obstacles in your way or may be, you know, mean to you or yeah. do things to you, they truly admire you. They're like Salieri with Mozart. Yeah. Remember Salieri? Absolutely. Salieri he uh, loved Mozart. He was yeah. Yeah. but he hated him at the yes, same time. Exactly right. Yeah. Because he was so he admired him so Yeah, yeah. Well what a beautiful analogy. You know, it's kind of interesting because what you have you put the book out. The book is fantastic. Thank you. There's got to be a movie, Rudy. There's got to uh -oh. be a movie with a story. Really, with actors and people that are in there to kind of feel the emotional impact that you have had and continue to have to not only the music industry. People that are listening to your music are lifted to such a high level of thank you. spiritual ecstasy. Man, thank you. It, I, it really is. It's beautiful. I'm blessed. We are blessed. Thank you. For sure. In closing, now think about this, these young musicians that are listening and, and the message that you have a chance to, to really kind of reach them. What would you say to this next generation that could give them the hope and the understanding and the, the education that they want to seek out the music industry and have their own passion? How would you, what would you guide them? How, what, would you, what would you tell them? Well, you know, it's very difficult, you know, because you got to live in your own skin and you got to know yourself. But if you want to make it, you got to know ahead of time that it's going to be tough. Nothing comes easy. If you're talking to a person that's constantly telling you, no, you're talking to the wrong person, you just continue to, to you know, just continue to do something better every day. Wake up every, every day and, and like I do. I wake up every day trying to make a more extraordinary note that I, that I did the, the day before. I look, I look. And I learned that from the masters like Burt Bacharach. I, I, I worked for two years. I just finished working with Burt again. And he really digs deep into his heart. There's no coincidental note in any one of his melodies. Yeah. He really, really dug deep to find that melody. And that's what it's all about. You got to work really hard and you got to have the passion and you can't throw in the towel. If you throw in the towel, then it's all over. But if you continue, a one day it'll happen for you if, you if you have that passion within you. And you just gotta be, you know, persistent, man. You just gotta keep doing it every day. Don't think that you're writing a song and it's a crappy song and throw it away. There's a reason why God sent you that song. You know, there, there, there's an audience. Not everybody has to be Beyonce and sell, you know, 100 million uh, yeah, records, you yeah, know. Yeah. You, you, can, you can have 50,000 people that may love that song that you, that you are about to throw away. Yeah. So you know, there's a lot of things to it. You know, it's a long, but read my, read my book. Yeah, the book, is, the book is brilliant. Boy, this is fantastic. You know, what, what you have given to songwriters, arrangers, musicians, producers, you've given information that anyone that's listening in any of those areas mm -hmm. can understand and take information from that. Absolutely read the book because it's brilliant what you've laid Thank down you so and what you've given to them. And again, I'm waiting for the movie. Oh. I want to see the movie because it's going to be very, very exciting. <laughs> My wife know? wants Brad Pitt to play me, but... I <laughs> <laughs> A wise woman, there it is. See that? Thank you so much. Oh, man. You, Thank you. You really lift souls at such a high level through your music, but even more importantly, 
through your spoken word. Oh man, you thank really you. lift people at a high level. You've been doing this for years. Continue doing it. Oh, you are making you, a huge difference in this world, and we need that now. Oh, thank you, thank so, you much. so much. I'm so grateful to you. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs>